Hi, this is a demonstration of Ubuntu 16.04 LTS on the Microsoft Surface Pro 4. I'm going to go over what works, what doesn't, and a little bit about how I was able to even get this installed. So to start, if you try to boot the stock Ubuntu from USB, you will not be able to use the mouse or keyboard included or the touchscreen. There are no drivers for it. I was unable to get those to work with the stock version. However, as you can see, I'm moving this around. I'm touching the screen, so hold on. Now, I hooked up a USB hub to the single USB port, plugged in a standard mouse and keyboard, and I was able to get control of the machine so I could actually install Ubuntu and start finding drivers for this. First place I installed drivers from was the Tigerite kernel, which is a kernel for Microsoft Surface devices. That brought me keyboard and, uh, wi and some five Wi-Fi fixes, fixes and functionality, but unfortunately that did not enable the touch screen and I found that the Wi-Fi was unstable. That's when I checked the internet to see what was available and I found the RC8 Touch Kernel Plus compiled, as far as I'm aware, by a user on Reddit. The link is in the description below. I installed their kernel. It has all the latest patches put together from around the internet for, for the Wi-Fi and for the pen, as well as the touchscreen support. So I've had this in kernel stall for about a week and it's working really great. It's, so let's jump right in and see what works and what doesn't in this current state. All right, so the touchscreen does work in Firefox and all the other apps. I did notice that you can't touch on the screen here and have it scroll in Firefox, although the same issue does not occur in Google Chrome. If we go to YouTube, we can scroll up and down the page in Google Chrome as expected. This I noticed the same behavior in Service Pro 2, so I'm not sure if that's just the way Firefox works on Linux or if there's something that needs to be enabled or not. We can watch a video in Chrome. We can go to one of my videos. Let's, let's watch this one. This is a fork video available in 4K. Let's play it 4K. It's a little laggy in 4K. If we drop it to 1080, it should be just fine. Yep. I've noticed pretty much flawless playback for YouTube videos in 1080p. In Google Chrome, as well as Firefox. One thing I did notice about Chrome, however, that doesn't happen in Firefox is that Chrome has a tendency to flicker while you're scrolling. It's very hard to tell the flickering. You can see right around here while I'm scrolling it. It's, it's, it's just a slight flicker, but it does flicker up here on the address bar. This doesn't happen in Firefox. There's no flicker, but you don't get that nice scroll capability. Um, as you can see, this is the Wi-Fi. It's working just fine. No issues with that. We can do a speed test. Some people talked about having instability on the Tigerite kernel, but I've found no instability with this one. This one's work. This one works great. That's excellent throughput for this connection at this time of day. Alright, so now let's check out some apps. I wasn't able to find anything uh, that compared to OneNote for Ubuntu except for a, an application called Zernal. 
I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I'm assuming they mean it as external. So I'm saying it zornal. And this is being a little bit of a pain. Don't know why. Oh, we may actually be having a small freeze here. Yes, yes, we do have we do appear to be having a freeze. And we're back. So let's just get back into the system. And take a look at Zernal. So this is Zernal. Or Zornal. Let me make this a little bigger. I guess I don't have to. And see, you can write with the pen in Zernal. And take notes, or... It doesn't have the same organization that OneNote has, uh, that you can't sort your notes into any kind of categories or sections. But if you did want to write handwritten notes with this, you absolutely can. The pen appears to be working flawlessly. Let's try different colors. It's all working. I'm browsing the file manager a little bit just to show you that all this is working. One thing I did when I set this up was I went to display and I changed the scale to two because otherwise it looks really tiny, sort of like this, which is no good. So. Uh, two seems to be a happy medium for the display. If you want to adjust brightness, just click brightness and lock. The brightness slider does work. Battery life is accurate, more or less. Unfortunately, the lid, when you, when you pull the keyboard up and close it to go to sleep, it doesn't work. So, it, it, you will not be able to wake the machine up once you put it to sleep. So, I would probably disable that in the settings. It would be under power. Keep it from being suspended when the lid is closed. When the lid is closed, do nothing. When the lid is closed, do nothing. It does have an on-screen keyboard. It's called... On board, you can pull it up. There it is. It kind of just sits down there uh, while you're browsing around. And so you can use the system as a tablet if you want to. That was a test. And I'll search for YouTube. Or you could also use the pen to input the keys. Unfortunately, because of the way it works, it's not really tuned to work with the touch screen or work to sense that, oh, you know, I'm touching something here, I'm touching a, a box, pop it up. It's sort of an all or nothing type of thing, but it's really not that bad, especially since it minimizes, it keeps the uh, browser up to here and keeps the keyboard down there. So no, it will not disappear when you're not using it. You have to keep it there if you're going into tablet mode. But again, it's really not that bad. And when you don't want it, you can just get rid of it. That's it. Just collapses. And then if you want it again, it's actually sitting right down there. You just tap it like so. Final word, you do have to use the touch screen to change the volume because unfortunately the volume buttons do not work so that is a downer but they do not work um if you want headphone jack headphone jack works just fine headphones are important to you at this point in time i would rate the experience on surface pro 4 for uh ubuntu 
moderate because obviously there are still issues around the system. You know, the volume buttons don't work. It did have that freeze. That was actually the first freeze I've had on the system the entire time. And there are thing, un, things that are unpolished like this. And the fact that you have to go through a, quite a process just to get it to work. Having to plug this in and going through all of that. Links are in the description below. And I will be happy to help anyone who needs assistance with getting this all set up. Again, all the links are down in the description, description below. I'd like to do an install video sometime. But hopefully these patches are going to make it into the... Tigerite kernel or into a more complete setup rather than having to download um, someone's pre-compiled kernel from the internet just to get all this up and running. But either way, whoever put it all together, great job. I think their name is Cantena on Reddit. I Again, I put the link to that in the description below. This is just about as workable as you will get at this point in time. Let me know if you have any questions. And have a great day, guys.